Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Anos. I'm continuing to expand on my previous weapon moveset and damage scaling videos by taking a look at the early game weapon skills to invest in to help you get through the earlier parts of the game before you've got the skills or the equipment to make a proper build. The idea is to highlight skills, which in my opinion will provide you with a good tool set to help you deal with some of the scenarios you encounter before you have a wider array of tools available to deal with them. If you enjoy the video, please let me know by leaving a like or comment. Feel free to put in requests for videos. I'm open to ideas, but bear in mind that I have quite a few topics that I want to cover already. Also bear in mind that any skills I highlight are only based on my opinion and testing. I'm totally up for a debate if you have a different opinion or experience. Just feel free to let me know. Okay, let's jump in. The hatchets. The hatchets are a strange weapon. At first glance, you'd think they were built for close range, but as you expand the skill set, you begin to realise there's a lot of mid-range options which can provide you with some great versatility. The first skill I'm going to cover is called Grease Lightning. This attack is great but it comes with some risks. It's a charge attack which, while having great range and damage, is also good for starting or finishing a fight. It can also leave you open to being attacked while you charge it up. One thing I didn't realise at first is that you don't need to charge it the whole way for it to be effective. You can begin the charge and then let go of circle at any time you need to. The move won't hit as hard as it would with a full charge, but it's super fast so you can avoid being hit if you time it right. Just look at how fast it is, and bear in mind that I had no chance of getting a full charge off on this guy. You can also invest another skill point into Boulder Breaker to turn the charge attack into a ranged option which has the added bonus of leaping you backwards to maintain a healthy distance from your enemy. Again, the point of these videos is simply to offer you some tools and options for some of the scenarios that you'll encounter in your early game journey. Next we're going to look at the high stand throw, Piercing Hurl. I found this move really useful for attracting the attention of one enemy when there are a few nearby and you don't want to simply walk up like you own the place. I use it to draw enemies to me while still getting some damage in. Now I know that we have long range options like the bow or the rifle, but I like to save my ammo for longer range engagements. We don't have to worry about ammo with the hatches, obviously. Also, the damage on this throw is impressive. If you want to stay at range, you can definitely do that, keeping a safe distance and still putting the hurt on your opponent. It's also great if you need to disengage from a fight because you've taken too much damage. You can still keep your damage up and finish the fight from a safe distance. Bear in mind that there are two additional skills you can invest in early game to both speed up the charge of your throw and to extend the range. Also, if you think about the opportunity for applying status effects like poison, paralysis, fire damage, etc. With a little investment in either the Omnio Magic Tree or the Ninjutsu Tree, you can do this at range and keep the fight totally under your control. Just check how good this damage is. The next skills I'm going to cover are Chain Hurl 1 and Chain Hurl 2 in low stance. On its own, Chain Hurl 1 isn't that impressive, to me at least, but when you pick up Chain Hurl 2, you have the ability to keep unloading on your opponent as long as you have the key energy to do so. Notice how it has an interrupt effect and a very slight pushback. This is fantastic when an enemy is trying to push closer to you. It forces them to keep a little more distance and give you time to key pulse and back away further if you want to, or, if you prefer, dash in to finish them off when the time is right. Again, think about how quickly you can stack up status effects on your enemy if you wanted to poison them or set them on fire. Combine that with the ability to back away and keep applying damage, it gives you some great early options. Just check out how well this can work. The fight takes a little bit longer, but it does keep you safe, and that's really important when you're low on health and you're out of potions. The next skill I'm going to cover is in low stance again, called Spinning Crab. Now this one doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but the attack is designed to attack enemies' ankles and feet. What do you do when you chop me down a tree? You attack the lower trunk of course, and this attack does just the same. Yeah I know, I know, that was cheesy, but it was a good analogy, so I'm keeping it in. The Spinning Crab attack has a chance to knock your opponent off their feet, at which point you can jump in and grapple them for heavy damage. If you don't manage to knock them down, the move is quick enough with enough momentum, it's like a hit and run. You go through your enemy and out the other side. Great move if you've got another enemy coming up behind you. 
It will allow you to put in some damage on the guy in front of you and get you out of range from the guy behind you, all while putting on decent damage and giving you the chance of finishing the fight early with a grapple attack. Here's the spinning crab in action at full speed. The next skill I'm going to cover is called Death From Above. It's used in mid stance. You can add on a quick triangle attack to your regular combination. Your character will leap backwards and hurl one of your hatchets. The damage on this attack is impressive, but not only that, it's a smart way to disengage after your combination, getting you to a safer distance and out of easy reach. This will give you a little breathing room to keep pulls, roll out the way and then take advantage of your range attacks, if your opponent is still alive that is. Also, check out how I managed to finish this guy off as he was about to charge me. Quick backward leap and hatchet to the face finished him off real nice. Right, we have two more skills to touch on before we wrap this up. Both of them require some practice because the timing is tricky. There's a risk using these moves, but the payoff is huge if you can pull them off. First of all, the parry, called the shaker. Now, unlike some other parry moves in the game, this one will put some impressive damage in all on its own. It doesn't simply redirect your opponent's attack. It makes them pay for it immediately. You can see in the footage here my early attempt at practicing this. The timing on the move is tricky as hell. You have to time your guard just before their weapon hits you. So far, for me, it's been the easiest to use when an opponent has a slow moving weapon or if they're in high stance trying to get heavy hits in. Pulling it off is difficult, but it's so satisfying when you get it right. And for most basic enemies, it's the death sentence because they're so far out of position and already at half health. Put some time in practicing this move and it will really serve you well. Okay, final move, Demon Uppercut. This one can be used in either high or mid stance. It basically throws your hatchet at very short range at your opponent's feet. The payoff is that it does a huge amount of key damage and you have a high chance to be able to grapple to finish the fight quickly. The tricky part is that the range on the attack is pretty short so you have to get your timing right with it, otherwise you run the risk of getting caught out. You can see in the footage here me practicing the move, missing and paying for it, but I only had to catch him with it once and he ran straight out of key energy, which let me finish the pesky little bugger off with a grapple. One last thing before we wrap it up. How cool is this? To sheathe the hatches, you flick the blood off them first. Very nice little touch. Right guys, that's the lot. I know there are plenty of other moves to consider, but these are the earliest, and in my opinion, most noteworthy that you can get access to before you've had to clear too many missions. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found it useful. If you did, let me know and I'll keep them coming. Thanks again, guys. Love you all. Stay safe. Bye-bye now.